Islam, Islam, peace and love, peace, love, and energy, energy, energy. I am Shadé Renee L, and I'm back at it again with another video. All rights reserved. And today I'm actually going to be going over a quick video on the, the Declaration of Independence of 1776. It's going to be a quick video, just going to read straight through it. Uh, with that being said, thank you for tuning in. Please like, share, subscribe. And I'm actually going to be playing a scene from um, this clip of the Underground Railroad. She's actually going to go over the beginning. And it has subtitles if you want to read along. In the course of his events, it becomes necessary for one people to dissolve the political bonds which have connected them with another and to assume among the powers of the earth the separate and equal section between the laws of nature and of nature's God and Tyrant. We hold these truths to be self evident that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creators with certain unalienable rights, that among these are black. Liberty and the pursuit of happiness. To secure these rights, governments are instituted among men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the government. That whenever any form of government becomes destructive of these ends, it is allowed to alter or to abolish it. No government may be granted power in such form to affect their safety and happiness. When a long train of abuses and usurpations occurs invariably, the same object against their design is producing under absolute despotism. It is their right, it is their duty to grow such government and to provide new guards to the future security. All right, uh, they didn't chop it too much. That was pretty much the beginning. And again, you can actually find a copy. I actually found my copy on rvbay.com. Uh, has a lot of great information. So you can guys, you guys can go ahead and check out that website if you'd like the full copy right here. Declaration of Independence, 1776. All right, and if I'm not mistaken, she left off on future security, and that's where I'm going to pick up where she left off. And it reads as follows. Such has been the patient suffrage of these colonies, and such is now the necessity which constrains them to alter their former systems of government. The history of the present king of Great Britain is a history of repeated injuries and usurpations, all having in direct object the establishment of an absolute tyranny over these states. To prove this, let facts be submitted to a candid world. All right, it says he refused to accent to laws, the most wholesome and necessary for the public good. He has forbidden his govern, governors to pass laws of immediate and pressing importance, unless suspended in their operation to accent should be obtained. And when so suspended, he has utterly neglected to attend to them. He has refused to pass other laws for the accommodation of large districts of people, unless those people would relinquish the right of representation and the legislator a right to inestimable to them and formidable to tyrants only. He has called together legislative bodies at places unusual, uncomfortable, and distant from the depository of, their, of the public records for the sole purpose of fatiguing them into compliance with his measures. He has dissolved representative house repeatedly for opposing with mainly firmness his invasions on the rights of the people. He has refused for a long time after such dissolutions to cause others to be elected, 
whereby the legislative powers incapable of the annihilation have returned to the people at large for their exercise. The state remaining in the meantime exposed to all the dangers of invasion from without and the convulsions within. He has endeavored to prevent the population of these states for the purpose of obstructing the laws for naturalization of foreigners, refusing to pass others to encourage their migrations hither and raising the conditions of the new appropriation of lands. He has obstructed the administration of justice by refusing his accent to laws for establishing judiciary powers. He has made judges depending on his will alone for the tenure of their offices and the amount and payment of their salaries. He has erected a multitude of new offices and sent Hitler swarm of officers to harass our people and eat out their substance. He has kept among us in times of peace, standing armies without the consent of our legislators. He has affected to render the military independent and superior to the civil power. He has combined with others to subject us to a jurisdiction foreign to our constitution and unacknowledged by our laws, giving his accent to their acts of pretended legislation for quartering large bodies of armed troops among us for protecting them by a mock trial from punishment for any murders which they should commit on the inhabitants of these states. For cutting off our trade with all parts of the world. For imposing taxes on us without our consent. For depriving us in many cases of the benefits of trial by jury for transporting us beyond seas to be tried for pretended offenses, for abolishing the free system of English laws in a neighboring province, establishing thereon an arbitrary government and enlarging its boundaries so as to the render at once an example and fit instrument for introducing the same absolute rules into these colonies, for taking away our charters abolishing our most valuable, valuable laws and altering fundamentally the forms of our governments. For suspending our own legislators and declaring themselves invested with power to legislate for us in all cases whatsoever. He has plundered our seas, ravaged our coast, burnt our towns and destroyed the lives of our people he is, at this time, transporting large armies of foreign mercenaries to complete the works of death, dissolution, and tyranny already begun with circumstances of cruelty and perfidy scarcely par paralleled in the most barbarous ages and totally unworthy the head of a civilized nation. He has constrained our fellow citizens taken captive on the high seas to bear arms against their country, to become the executioners of their friends and brethren, or to fall themselves by their hands. He has excited domestic ins insurrections among us and has endeavored to bring on the inhabitants of our frontiers and merciless Indian savages, who known rule of warfare is an undistinguished destruction of all ages, sexes, and conditions. In every stage of these oppressions, we have petitioned for redress in the most humble terms. Our repeated petitions have been answered only by repeat, repeated injury. Injury, excuse me. A prince whose character is thus marked by every act which may define a tyrant, is unfit to be ruler of a free people. Nor have we been waiting in attentions of our British brethren 
We have warned them from time to time of the attempts by their legislator to extend an unwarrantable jurisdiction over us. We have reminded them of the circumstances of our immigration, immigration and settlement here. We have appealed to the native justice and magnanimity, and we have conjured them by the ties of our common kindred to dis disavow these usurpations, which would inevitably interpret our connections and correspondence. They too far have been deaf to the voice of justice and consanguinity. We must therefore acquiesce in the necessity which denounces our separation and hold them as we hold the rest of mankind, enemies and wars, in peace, friends. We therefore, the representatives of the United States of America and General Congress, assemble appealing the Supreme Judge of the world for the rectitude of our intentions do in the name and by authority, the good people of these colonies solemnly publish and declare that these United colonies are and of right ought to be free and independent states, that they are absolved from, the, from all allegiance to the British crown and that all political connection between them and the state of Great Britain is and ought to be totally dissolved and that as free and independent states, they have full power to levy war, conclude peace, contract out alliances, establish commerce, and to do all other acts and things which independent states may of right do. And for the support of this declaration with a firm reliance on the protection of divine providence, we mutually pledge to each other our lives, our fortunes, and our sacred honor. And there you have it. There you have it. And I'm actually, again, gonna get back to the last scene. I, I, I found it to be very powerful personally. So I hope you enjoy the little clip as much as I kind of did. No spoils, no spoils. I'll just play it straight through. So this is after she just did the speech. All right, and there you have it. Um, I think that's pretty self-explanatory, pretty much what she meant. And I hope you guys got the whole point. <laughs> Other than that, read between the lines or maybe watch the video again. I definitely appreciate your time. I appreciate your energy. Um, if you haven't done so thus far, please like, share, subscribe, go ahead and donate. Other than that, free baby Ashe. And until next time, peace and love, study well study everything keep that which is good peace and love islam